Good afternoon and welcome to Euromed Migration Talks, a web series dedicated to discussing migration in the Euro-Mediterranean region with top experts, practitioners and policymakers in the field. I am your host Marco Ricorda from the International Center for Migration and Policy Development and today I have the pleasure to talk to Eva Garzon, a global displacement lead at Oxfam Intermon in Spain, who over the past three years, she has been leading the research within Oxfam Confederation in the link between narratives, public campaigning, advocacy and migration. Eva, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you very much for having me. My first question today is about COVID-19. Of course, uh, this is a topic that uh, has highly impacted uh, our lives and the way we conceive migration. Due to COVID-19, migration is today more than ever perceived as a threat. What would be your advice to media and public influencers to avoid approaches fueling the us versus them type of discourse? My first advice would be to not echo uh, unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated claims uh, that depict migration as, as a threat. Um, meaning that sometimes some prominent figure might be a politician or just an influential uh, person might state something that would depict migration that way. Uh, but we, don't, we do not necessarily have to echo those claims even if we find them very, very striking. What I would advise to be done instead is to bring forward those narratives that uh, have also been highlighted by COVID and that have to do with the fact that we are all very closely connected and that we are all part of um, the same communities and that we depend on each other. And I'll, I'll make an example. One of the first things that the European Union had to do was to protect the movements of seasonal workers within the union because their role was essential to keep um, the agricultural sector and the food system uh, working for everybody. So those narratives that uh, enhance the fact that we share uh, a life within the same communities and that we share values and that we all rely on each other are the ones that need to be highlighted, especially in these uh, challenging times. Thank you. And uh, how can uh, then international organizations and NGOs uh, engage actively to counter such trends that you just uh, mentioned without reinforcing existing negative perceptions? I'd uh, say first uh, to uh, encourage migrant uh, leadership and migrant organization leadership in shaping the narrative on migration. And I think all international organizations and NGOs can facilitate uh, that. Of course, building alliances, we need to have like a common approach and a common narrative um, on migration and that will make it more impactful. And then what I would say is the first step is to critically analyze and potentially correct our own uh, communication practices. Um, when we, if we build a world cloud of the most prominent discourses on migration, we will hear a lot the words problem, threat, crisis, vulnerability, um, even invasion. And we think, I think we need to move, move towards a new discourse that, it's more, that relates more to what migration actually is and in which we will hear more the words opportunity, aspiration, project, people, family, innovation, entrepreneurship. So just be very aware of our own communication practices and the kind of messages that we are putting out, out there so that we do not react to the anti-migration discourse permanently, permanently, but instead we put forward our own narrative uh, on migration. And uh, promoting an evidence-based public discourse that puts the migration debate back in the field of facts and figures is absolutely important today. Uh, what is the role of uh, investigative journalism and statistics when it comes to demonstrating the actual contribution that migrants make to, the, to host communities? I think it is absolutely essential because at times of disinformation and where this information is growing, the problem with this information is not necessarily that people believe things that are not true, is that people stop believing or stop trusting 
in data and in evidence. So we need to uh, encourage this um, uh, fact-checking and investigative journalism and data production from trusted sources so that there is a general agreement on um, certain sources that are to be trusted so that people can uh, resort to them. And that is essential because I think we need to restore the limits between opinion and facts. And they are both super important because it's, what, uh, it's how, we're, how we move forward. But we need to be able to distinguish very clearly what is a fact and what is an opinion. And I think uh, research and investigative journalism and data production, those are absolutely key elements to, to build those limits again. At uh, Oxfam Intermon, you have developed uh, Maldita Migración, which is a project to tackle disinformation in synergy with uh, fact-checking journalists. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Maldita.es is a fact-checking uh, uh, journalism foundation in Spain, and they've been for some years now working in verifying pieces of disinformation that they found online. And uh, three years ago, they set up a, a WhatsApp service so that people could actually send them pieces of disinformation for them to verify and bring them back the, uh, the rebuttal. Um, so when they started doing that, they realized that 30% um, or above 30% of the disinformation pieces that they were receiving had to do with migrants and refugees. So they approached us because they knew we were concerned with the issue of narratives and they suggested that we might be able to build a partnership. And that's how we started piloting this collaboration between fact-checking journalism and uh, applying it for social justice purposes, that it's working super well. What we do is we, um, again, from a trusted source, we make reliable information available for everybody in very um, easy formats uh, for them to digest, understand, but also to vitalize so that it's actually the data and the verified information that it's out there more so than the disinformation. And I think what is very relevant about this project is that it's people are sending it through WhatsApp and they are also disseminating the rebuttals through WhatsApp. Um, so that has enabled us to actually uh, work in an environment which is uh, that of the private social networks where this information usually thrives. Um, and I, I think it's, it has also given people the sense of community that they needed to actually stand up against this information. So we are uh, really happy with how this project is going. And congratulations about that. Uh, building on your experience, my last question is, uh, what type of tools could be used to increase the capacity of citizens to detect disinformation and hate speech towards migrants? So some of the tools are, uh, have to do with the project that I've mentioned because those are the ones that we are uh, trying to pilot. First one would be what I mentioned before, we need to promote trusted sources. So those uh, sources that are reliable need to be known so that people can resort to that disinformation. And then we need to invest in what we call um, media literacy for critical thinking. So again, understanding uh, the contents that are out there, what is an opinion piece, what is a, a journalistic article, and then what is a piece of this information, how it looks like, what, what is the, part, the pattern that they usually follow. Because with little training, it's very easy to identify. Um, and of course, it's also uh, important to have these uh, strategies that are behind this information exposed, uh, because then people will be the first ones that do, do, do not want to be tricked into, into believing these things. So, so um, media literacy for critical thinking, it's very important to have people think not only why is this disinformation out there, uh, but also why do they want me to, to believe this. Um, another tool would be this, this sense of community that I was uh, mentioning before, the fact that there is a group of people there uh, actively countering this information on, online. Um, it's also a very, very important tool.
Eva Garzón, thank you very much for being with us today. It was a real pleasure to talk about uh, an issue that uh, seems to be uh, of more and more importance, which is disinformation today, especially with the recent release uh, of this famous movie by Netflix called The Social Dilemma. Uh, everybody is talking about, and it certainly also affects the way we look at narratives, including the migration narrative.